take a look at the ingredients list and tell me how many ingredients you see. Okay. This is it? This is it? Yeah. I see three. Yeah, that's it. And that's it? Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Get Ready With Norm, which I like to call Grow Norm. And today we have Aaliyah here with us that's going to be sharing her skincare journey with us and understanding what's going on in the skincare industry. Definitely if you like the content, subscribe, share, comment, let us know how we could improve and get better because we're here because we believe there's a need for these information and you're the audience so if we didn't have the audience then we'd just be talking to herself right and we don't like talking to herself sometimes sometimes i thought to myself uh we have our virtual audience on ig live that's tuning in so big up big up the ig live audience and hopefully we can incorporate everybody together and we have the team in the back shout out to the media team big up vincent you know so shout out to all the ones that are helping us today and help us to get to where we are. Yeah. So ready to kick it off? Yes, sir. Yeah. Definitely tell the people who you are. Okay. My name is Aaliyah. I'm 25. Yeah. Like we discussed, I'm from Whitby. Um, background Jamaican like you. Wow. But first, Jamaica. Gen first generation Canadian. <laughs> born, yeah. raised Whitby yeah. my whole life. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of stuff, honestly. You asked about my career, my background. It's all over the place, really. Yeah. But lately, like I said, I've been doing like movies and background work, getting into that field lately. So yeah. it's been like a, a, a bit of an adventure. So, you know, this is normal for you, having the spotlight. Exactly. This right? is nothing. This is nothing. <laughs> Easy peasy. Okay. So tell me a little bit more about the hobbies or things that you like doing? I have always liked uh, filmmaking, which is why I wanted to do background work, just to kind of be a fly on the wall in that industry and yeah. just see the behind the scenes of it. Yeah. And that's been a lot of fun. I've been doing like some TV and like one movie so far. Yeah. It's just been this year. Yeah. And then another big hobby of mine is traveling. So this mm -hmm. year I got to do a lot of traveling fortunately and there's still more to come we've yeah. done the grand canyon we did yeah. vegas yeah florida yeah. miami <laughs> we did um where else did i go costa rica i just came back from cuba you see outside uh, yeah exactly exactly yeah, yeah, and yeah. next up we're going to japan which should be fun okay well, definitely what was it what, what's the greeting in japan um, I don't even know yet. I haven't done my research. What All is right. Konnichiwa? <laughs> All right. I, I believe that I think that is it. But all the people that are there that can comment in the comments, let us know what a greeting is when, yeah. so that you can get all please, the, please. the preps. So by the time you reach there, you're good. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to do my research. And if, if I get some help, that'd be better. All right. Cool. So definitely like traveling. You said that you like doing your work you love what you do and yeah. that's a reflection of what you do exactly right so before you got into that space what would you say are the things that you used to do up to that point i did a lot of work with children and youth so i worked in schools and um after school clubs like camp type of stuff yeah. and then most recently i did a group home mm -hmm. Um, and I still continue to work with like young kids, autism, ADHD, all of that stuff was my focus. Um, I've sort of branched away from that, but have some connection to it still. Okay. So yeah. definitely extra work. Exactly. Definitely. 100%. <laughs> I do love working with kids. I like helping them out and making a difference. When you see like their progress, especially when you start with them young <coughs> and grow with them, there's a lot you can learn and there's a lot that you can influence them with as well. Okay. So that's that's why I 
why I really enjoyed working with. Well, it sounds like your old son a lot. Yeah, definitely. So we're gonna talk about the skincare. Right? Exactly. Because you gotta maintain it's a, that skincare yep, of your old son. <laughs> it's important. Right. So let uh, let us know like what is your typical skincare routine. Um. Oh, wait, it depends, like, <laughs> it depends time of year, time of day. We're going to talk about it. Part of body. Okay, face Yeah. It's complicated. Okay. We do, we have, like, so many steps, and it depends, again, what time of the day we're talking yeah, about. So so walk so morning through. time, yeah. morning time, we go through all the, you know, wash your face, um, exfoliate, mm -hmm. you put the serums on, you put the sunscreen on, you put the moisturizers what, on. What do you wash your face with? Um, again, I have like four different things that I wash my face with and it depends on how my skin's looking that day. Yeah. So if I, if it's dry, then I've got the product for that. If it's fine, then I've got a different, a uh, different face wash for that. If like we're breaking out, I mean, again, I use a different, yeah. it, so we've got like a whole collection of beauty supplies and it, it really just, there's no one thing that covers every every need that I have for okay. my skincare. Okay. And how did you end up finding these different products? Trial and error. Trial and error. So yeah. talk to me. We're on lots the trial of right money, now. Yeah. Lots of time. Um, lots of people and sources, like mm -hmm. information. I went to estheticians most recently. I think last year I was having like terrible skin and I couldn't figure out why, no one could figure out why, and mm -hmm. I think it was related to stress, mm -hmm. which is again why I had a major career change and mm -hmm. started doing more things that I find enjoyment in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I said, trial and error, and we finally figured out the regimen that works the best for mm -hmm. me so far, but I'm always open to trying like new things and seeing if, again, there's this one super product that just covers everything you need okay so I'll, I'll, it sounds like there's a lot of information yeah and we're gonna dive in <laughs> okay, right? okay so i want you to walk me through so we have all of these different products that we use for different things but how did you get that understanding that you need to have different products for different things um i just followed what my skin was reacting to basically uh if one thing's not working out if um, you know I'm not seeing the results that I want then I, I kind of had to deduce see what's not working and try to replace that so again it's it's a lot of trial and error just figuring out the what be, what best works for you yeah and researching different products again asking people that that have the information and Figuring it out, really. So walk us through that first step, skincare world. Mm -hmm. I want you to bring us all in that direction. Now you're young, and you're getting introduced to skincare. Like, what was that introduction process like? When did basic. you start exploring? It was basic to start. It was just you need a face wash and a moisturizer, but then that's not working anymore and you discover oh you need like wrinkle creams at some point you need a uh, sunscreen to protect your skin if yeah. it's if you're seeing breakouts you need to wash it with something stronger yeah. so it, it starts from a very basic starting position and then it kind of grows from there and it expands so how did you know that you need a cleanser and like how how did you know that, hey, I'm gonna go buy a face wash. Like, what was that mindset to be like, I'm gonna go give that a try? It's just something instilled in me. My mom teaching me how to properly take care of myself. Okay, to so your mom put my... you on. Yeah. On your first product, right? <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, so your mom is like, all right, use this for your skin. Exactly. So did you go to your mom and you're like, oh, mom, like, my skin is breaking out, or like, or did she just, <laughs> when you were younger? She just knew. She's like, you've reached the age where okay, so you it's gotta time to start talk. considering, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you start getting on that skincare wave with your mom. Hmm. You're trying these cleansers. So is it that she walked with you along the way or she just gave you that bus and then you started to like 
do research yeah. to find out what works for you. She was there in the beginning, and then again, it's what works for one person is not going to work for everybody. So her regimen, she instilled in me, and again, that didn't. I felt that that didn't work for me, so I was doing my own research, seeing what my friends were using, finding stuff on social media, stuff that I was like, okay, maybe I'll give that a try. I think I want to see those results that this person's seeing, and kind of just bringing in different aspects. So like, you start doing makeup, you start researching, watching videos about different different products that you could use, and, and it all just kind of starts coming together over time. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, different products you could use, talking to your friends, checking out what's going online. Yeah. I'm guessing when you compare to where you leaned on for solid, of solid voice, is it your friends? Is it online? Like, what, what, do you think your friends know anything about skincare? Uh, I think they, they've sort of figured out what works for their skin. Yeah. But for my skin, I don't know. I think I've taken sources from, like, I've taken information from a lot of different sources at this point. There's no one that I go to that I'm like, this person absolutely knows what I need. Mm -hmm. um, it's mostly just uh, if they've got a similar situation that I do, then maybe I could give what they're doing a try and see if that works for me as well. And if not, then it's back to the back to the drawing board and figuring out how to you know yeah. mix and match products to best find my regimen. Okay, so we're how did you know that? That's that's that I find that's pretty cool, right? For you to be like, yo, I can't lean on one person. Usually, when somebody finds one thing, they stick with it, mm -hmm. right? So how did you know to? diversify your pretty much skincare portfolio right like you said when when you find the one thing you stick with it but a lot of times i wasn't finding the one thing i was finding something and it wasn't giving me what i was looking for so i had to know to go back and try something else and what does that look like for you to find what you're looking for what were you looking for um I was looking for stuff that would clear my breakouts last okay. year. Last year specifically, I think I did a lot of work on my skin because um, just whatever I was doing before, it wasn't working and I wasn't happy with how my skin was looking. Yeah. So is it that you had a, a, a breakout that you're like, I need to get rid of this? It was like over the span of several months that I was breaking out. Okay. And I couldn't find the source of it. I couldn't figure that out. So I, I just sought out different products and I went to an esthetician in, in my area. She gave me some advice. Um, I turned to my friends I, that had similar situations and mm -hmm. asked them like what they had done in the past for their breakouts. And I was taking advice from so many different sources mm -hmm. and if something worked, then I would keep it, and if it didn't, then trash it, find something else. And what do you determine, like, how do you determine if it worked or not? Is it immediate? Is it like mm. you try it for a certain time? I think a lot of people want things to be immediate, want to see the results immediately. Um, so I did have to practice some patience. I, like, I knew nothing was going to be overnight, mm -hmm. so... I did give things a bit of a try, like a, a, a bit of a trial period when I was testing them out. How long is your trial period? Let's say a week. And if you're a not week? seeing, if you're not seeing anything in a week, then it's like, is this really working for you? Yeah. Yeah. So if after a week, absolutely nothing's changed, not even the tiniest progress, then, then I would usually switch. Switch. Is this all right, bin. You yeah. just drop it in the bin. Yeah. It's like on to the next one. <laughs> Some things I would keep trying and keep in my regimen a little bit, maybe reduce how often. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I was like, it was sort of a, a messy process because I was just taking anything I could get really and yeah. throwing everything together and like 
not really giving it the proper time to see if it was working. Um, and there's no way to really know if you're if you bring in like 12 different products all at one time, there's no way to know what's actually helping. Yeah, because you try helping. the yeah. different one. And like, what's the budget on this? Mm, at the time, my biggest concern was getting my skin back to where I wanted it to be. So I wasn't, I wasn't worried about the budget. Um, fortunately, I found a lot of products and a lot of uh, people, like um, the skincare technicians, who were affordable so I wasn't like exceeding what I could afford yeah. um, and and over time I found what worked and what didn't so give me a range how much were you dropping on this <laughs> let's think okay my friend introduced me to one skincare line that was pretty affordable and um, maybe like 10, 10 bucks a bottle for mm. their for their face washes and I probably tried like two or three of their face washes. She introduced me to trying skin sunscreen, sorry. Um, and again that was pretty affordable. That's like fifteen dollars for that one and it's a very good one. Um, when I would see the skincare tech, she was maybe um, that was pretty expensive. Maybe like eighty bucks a session. I only saw her tw twice, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and she referred me to some of her products as well. Those were maybe like a hundred bucks. What? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I and I only got there. one. I only took one product. It's pretty small, but it's like the super medical grade stuff. So okay. it was serious, but it didn't do anything for me personally. Yeah. Um, and when that wasn't working, the stuff that I use now that I found worked for me maybe like 16 bottle 16 dollars a bottle um a lot of what my friend referred me to stuck and i've got like maybe three or four um core products that i wouldn't take out of my regimen now because they've just i found that they are the stuff that works and that i'm most satisfied with yeah. and all together if I had to replace all of those right now, I wouldn't spend over a hundred bucks on all of them. You're getting the juice right now. <laughs> this is like some detailed yeah. skincare tips that we're talking about. So thank you. Right? You're getting from pricing to like how to find some mm -hmm. and to figure out how long you should kind of wait before you start drawing for the bin. Right? So yeah. that's pretty cool. Now that we have an understanding of what was driving, when you were younger, did you have any major skincare issues that it mm -hmm. kind of like scarred you or something to remember or to talk about if there's any incident where you want to grow um, up? Growing up, I think my main focus, like the thing that I still haven't found a product for really is something that a lot of women men even people with my complexion uh experience something called hyperpigmentation um are you familiar with yeah. hyperpigmentation I, I, yeah. is that what they call like birthmark or no it's like, well maybe i i think it's more like areas of your skin where it's just naturally darker mm -hmm. um because you've just got more pigment in those areas okay. and in my face i experienced that a lot and I was unhappy with like just not being able to color match my foundation. It just wouldn't mm -hmm. overall blend in. My neck and up was always darker than my shoulders down. And so it made putting on makeup difficult for me. Mm -hmm. um, so that was something that I was sort of struggling with. And I've asked a lot of people about that and I've done a lot of research on that and still haven't found like the magnum opus product that could help with that so that's still sort of um one concern that i haven't addressed and breaking out i didn't grow up with that that really only started last year for me so fortunately it was like a tiny a tiny part of my skincare journey where it didn't affect me long term and mm -hmm. i was able to overcome it like pretty quickly okay and in terms of the 
issue with the hyperpigmentation, mm -hmm. what is it that you would want to solve? The making the like, what would you say? Um, having a more even skin complexion, I think, is the main goal mm -hmm. when you're talking about hyperpigmentation. You just want like everything to be pretty much one solid color. Um, doesn't have to be lighter. Doesn't have to be darker. Just like even. Mm -hmm. So evenly distributed. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> so, did you have hyper hyperpigmentation in places that, like, are visible? Yeah. When you were in school, people yeah. would see it. Yeah. And then Some what was that like? Sometimes, but it, I never really let it bother me. Um, what other people thought, but personally, it did bother me myself just because it limited the things that I wanted to do for myself, like in terms of makeup again. Mm -hmm. So that's the only reason that I was ever really bothered by it. Okay, so I'm guessing it's on your face. Mm -hmm. Okay, because yeah. I can't see it, right? No, <laughs> we've learned how to cover it, just oh, okay. not how to solve it, right? <laughs> okay. It's like a Band-Aid solution. Okay, so I'm guessing when you were younger, when you weren't really doing that, then exactly. that's, that's when you would have issues, I would assume. Yeah, that's when you heard stuff from people, and again, didn't didn't really let it bother me. Tried not to, at least. Okay. Because um, your head on your body is what <laughs> your mom would say, right? <laughs> no, I never heard that one. <laughs> it is a Jamaican saying. <laughs> She's never used it. <laughs> to say that um, you have a strong will, so people oh. can't really influence you and bully you or make you feel less than yourself. I guess so. And it's one of the unsaid things. I think uh, in terms of the hyperpigmentation we've seen in today's society where a lot of individuals embrace that kind of discoloration yeah. and they just ask people to accept them for who they are and just work with it as it is. Mm -hmm. right? I think there's a couple individuals that are celebrities that might have it, but I might yeah. be confusing it with um, there is a skin condition that kind of like... Oh, I think I know. Yeah. But like vitiligo, vitiligo. If that's what you want to call it, <laughs> you know, sure. <laughs> so we'll just work with it, right? Yeah, a lot of, yeah, we've definitely started to embrace things that used to be insecurities, mm -hmm. especially on our skin. Um, as a society, I think people have moved towards a more accepting and more um, positive, skin positive uh, place. So yeah. That's good. I definitely, it doesn't bother me as much as when I was a kid, again, because I've learned how to cover it up, so mm -hmm. um, I'm not as bothered by it, but if if I could wake up tomorrow and it be perfectly the way that I want it to be, then I would still take that. Okay, all right, no worries. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, it seems like there's a definitely a getting ready process. So walk us through that. What, what does that look like when you're jumping out the shower? What what does that look like? Okay, where am I going? What day is it? What what's, you, you, what's you my skin lead. looking like this we're, day? We're working with you. <laughs> okay, bring us through this journey. Take us on that ride. Well, today, um, when I woke up and got out of the shower and I was getting ready, um, I did my typical face wash. I used um the one that I use when I feel like I'm gonna break out or I feel like I need an extra deep cleanse mm -hmm. this morning. That was sort of how my skin was looking and feeling. It was kind of Definitely oily. intuition with your skin, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, when it's oily, I use this one. And then um, sunscreen, uh, moisturizer. Um, again, the, the stuff I use isn't it isn't like extravagant or super fancy now. It's pretty simple stuff that I'm using, mm -hmm. um, which I've learned is better than like spending a whole ton of money on stuff that just has the name and recognition and really doesn't provide what I need it to provide. So when you say simple stuff, give us an example of one product that you find is simple and why you, can, what does simple mean I to I can you? drop names. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's up to you. What, um, what's one product that you think is simple? I think the brand Cetaphil, you're familiar? Yeah. I think their stuff is generally pretty simple. It's um, uh, gentle ingredients, nothing, no fragrances, no smells. 
no um, expensive ingredients. It's pretty affordable. It's like a drugstore product. And I think their, their brand, their line of skincare is going to be one of my staples for a long time because it's just, it works. Okay. And it's simple and it works. And what does simple mean to you? What does simple mean to me? Um, affordable, um, basic ingredients, um, you know, natural ingredients a lot of the time too. Um, maybe not a textbook length of ingredients. Um, stuff like that. And do I you read the ingredients? Are yeah. you that person that pay attention to ingredients that's on the label? I try to a lot of the time. I think everything that I use now, I know generally what's, what's in, in it. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So thank you for sharing that. Right. Mm -hmm. So definitely that is something that you currently use for yourself. Hopefully you can relate to figuring out what skincare routine to use when maybe you're, you're breaking up, yeah. right? You're getting some tips here. So question, when you put on moisturizer, do you put it on when you have wet, like you have water on your skin or you dry off? Mm, I think it's best when it's like <coughs> in between that, like still kind of damp because it allows it to soak in. Um, your, I think after you wash your face, especially with like, warm water your pores are open they're ready to be moisturized and i think that's the best time for you to use your moisturizer so that's typically when i would do it i don't let my skin dry out before i try to put something on it okay so do you use something like do you use a different moisturizer for your face as opposed to your body yeah so walk us through that and let us know a little bit um i I do have moisturizers that I'd like to stick with for my body. I like a uh, Carry brand. Um, stuff that, again, fragrance-free or super low. And um, I don't know, drugstore type products. Like, I'd like to keep it, keep it pretty simple in terms of like overall moisturization. My hand creams are used something different too for my hands because they're like perpetually dry throughout the day. Every time I wash my hands, you can see now, like I said, I came prepared. Yeah. I didn't put anything on after I washed my hands today. Yeah. And they're already starting to become dry. So like I always, anyone that knows me knows I always carry something with me for my hands throughout the day. Always reapplying that lip care too mm -hmm. my lips stay dry as well so i'm always re-moisturizing them throughout the day too so in terms of the budget for a face moisturizer as opposed to a body moisturizer like mm -hmm. what are you spending it's the same budget really my face moisturizers they don't have to be as big because it's just my face really but like i use a lot of cream for my body so i like to buy the big the big tubs of it um but generally, like I said, same drugstore, same, same type of product, really. So okay. the budget's not too far off. Okay, and when you say the budget's not too far off, is that like between 10 to 20? Yeah. So, so yeah. that's a safe space. So yeah. when you're going above $20 on a body moisturizer. I mean, I would for one that was like a staple, but I feel like I don't need to because the ones that work for me, mm -hmm. I don't need to spend that much on them. Okay. And you said the ones that work for you, what does that mean? By keeping you moisturized? Yes, definitely. Um, there's like a consistency thing too. I like richer moisturizers personally for myself. Mm -hmm. um, things that don't leave grease behind because I just don't like to feel the grease after I'm like moisturized. Um, and those are really the two criteria that I stick with. And what's your go-to moisturizer right now? My go-to? Carry. Carry lotion. Um, I like their shea butter one because I do like the, that ingredient. Sometimes, the shea butter. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I'll just get like um, pure African shea butter. And so use you that use raw shea butter yeah, by sometimes, itself? Sometimes. Isn't it hard to like break down and knead into? 
Uh, not too bad, no. And I'll just mostly use that like uh, over top, maybe if I need like extra, mm -hmm. extra. I do like oils too, like body oils. Um, in the winter time, especially when your skin gets drier and stuff, it's just like an added layer, like a sealant kind of that keeps everything moisturized. Mm -hmm. And the shea butter does that. It acts the same way. It kind of seals everything in after too. Is that before you go out in the world, or that's like before, before you go to bed? Oh. That you would mm. use like shea butter and body oils? Before, I say before I go out, I would do the sealing thing. If I'm going out, I would use those. If I was just going to bed, I probably wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we have a unique situation where we're going to talk about North. Okay. We have. Or body moisture. This is a unique situation. Right, because you've never tried it before. Never. And this is the first time you're seeing it. So, exactly. you know, we're getting that live first time impression so that we can understand how do you feel about a product and at norm, given that the cosmetic industry in North America is uh, self regulated. If we don't pay attention to the products that we use, some of these products may be harmful to your skin. I know you did touch on some topics where you were having a breakout or you had a issue that you needed immediate results for and you're kind of like trying to find something that works best for you. Mm -hmm. You don't got the time for <laughs> things to kind of like work itself out. And it's interesting because that's how we are in general. If we yeah. go to the gym, we want apps right now, right? If we are eating food, we want it to definitely taste good right now. We don't want it to grow on to tasting good so it's having an opportunity to have a product that works for you in a time frame that makes sense so my question on that is what is your view on a product being natural and organic mm, natural and organic ingredients first and foremost so um at least in the top three ingredients, you've got one of the naturals that, that the brand is promoting. So in your case, you definitely, um, you definitely emphasize the hazelnuts and stuff like this on, on the poster. So if I was looking at your ingredients, I'd be like, yeah, it's top three ingredients on the list. Then it's pretty much a natural, a natural product. Um, and again, like, we're not looking for a long list of ingredients. I think a lot of the time it's just, it becomes extensive. So if you've got a product with like simple ingredients, natural ingredients, then you've got a good product. Okay. So I'm going to give you, this is ah. your product actually. This right? is for so me. That's your gift. So I want you to give me your feedback about we're, we're, gonna, we're not going to get in yet, right? We're, I know you want to get in. <laughs> Sorry. Right? So we're going to slow down. Put it down. So Step away. How does it look? Give me your I like on this that. design. I like the glass container and the wooden lid. I think it's very easy. Like, I was even reading through it before, the directions, the ingredients, stuff like that. And it's really easy to find all the information on it. I like the logo. It's simple. It's a simple name. It catches. I like the leaf on there that shows you. We, we emphasize our organics and our natural ingredients. Um, and besides that, it's got like all the information that you would hope your, your skincare products are going to include as well. So I trust it right off the bat. It's a trustable. What was the first thing to make you trust it? Um, Good question. I think it just looks trust what what you would see at the <laughs> at the drugstore, and I trust the drugstore. <laughs> yeah. I trust uh, the logo. I trust the design of it. It just it it looks good, and when and when stuff looks good, you genuinely trust it. Okay. So in terms of the ingredients, mm -hmm. how many ingredients do you think is in that? Um. I don't know, because you've thrown me off now. So <laughs> I would have thought like maybe 
six, seven ingredients. All right, well, take a look at the ingredients list. Tell me how many ingredients you see. Okay, this is it? This is it? Yeah. I see three. Yeah, that's it. And that's it? That's it? Yeah, Have you ever seen it. that before? Three ingredients. Nope, not not in something like this. Mm, with my shea butter, it's literally just shea butter, so yeah. it's just the one ingredient. But with something like this, no, I don't th think I've seen just three ingredients. Uh, how, how does that make you feel to see a product with only three ingredients in there? Well, there are three ingredients that I recognize, which makes me feel good. If mm -hmm. it was like three things with super long names that I couldn't even pronounce then I probably wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't give it a second thought okay but I like we've got um what is this let's see fruit oil yeah almond oil and hazelnut seed oil yeah that's it so it's only three ingredients what do you think the consistency or how do you feel like the product is going to be um it's either smooth or like thick but workable okay all right so let's dive in i can open it yeah, yeah you can open it okay <laughs> no worries. My bad. so a little goes a long way so one of the main things that i want to show you is may i have your product yes sir <laughs> One of the main things to show is how much a little goes a long way. Because that norm, that whole thing that we want to keep is that whole simplicity mm -hmm. of what we're doing. So that you don't have to be using a lot. And most people are used to using a lot of water-based product. So yeah. this can moisturize both your hands. No, it can't. Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> In your in your palm? Starting on the palm? Yeah, so you rub it together. I feel like it's not gonna <laughs> moisturize my... Okay, I see that. <laughs> I see now. I get it. No, you're right. A little does go a long way. And there's still more. There's still more, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> there's still more product that I'm like still rubbing in. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Like, oh my God. Let's see them hands. You should Close keep up. your hands. <laughs> right? Look at the hands. So, you know, a little does go a long way. And that's the whole conception. Most people are using water-based products. So, that's why you have to use a lot mm -hmm. to get something out of it. And more. It's like, we want to change that understanding. Okay. Keeping everything simple. That could be your personal go-to hand butter um we have the bigger sizes that could be your body butter some of our customers use it on their as a lip balm as well some of the customers use it wherever they want to keep it you moisture. can use this as a lip balm yeah really yeah okay so it's like a two-in-one that's kind of perfect for me well, yeah the, the whole <laughs> aim is for you to take it home and let us know where it works best for you some yeah. of our customers i use it all over you know, uh -huh. i have different for variations of the products that we're getting ready to launch so that the customers can understand that we have more to offer that's the first out of 14 products that we've commercialized and it pretty much starts with me so okay, i use true. it on myself first and then after it, i've come to that point where we can release this to the market now I start to introduce it. Okay. Typically, I would use the products first, as as long <laughs> as it's so. applicable applicable to me. You know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's the first baby that we released. So I would love for you to, you know, definitely take that and give us some feedback on how it goes um, in terms of the size. That's the travel size. So as you said, uh, okay, when you're okay. on the go, you want to have something that you could use. Yeah. For sure, you could have that in your bag. You're on a flight. You can take that with you. Mm -hmm. You can have the bigger one at home and just have those and options. Got multiple. So Anywhere what do you, you think about the... the face. Huh? Sorry. I just punched myself in the door. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Right. So what do you think about the, the product in general, given that you just experienced it? It's only three ingredients. Is that something you expected from a product with three ingredients? 
I like the consistency. I feel like I'm very picky with my hand creams, but I do like this consistency. I like that it's not leaving like a greasy, sticky feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, no, I wouldn't have expected that from three ingredients. Like, like I said, the only other thing that I use that's similar to this at all is like oils or um, butters, shea butter, stuff like that. And that usually does leave a really greasy residue behind, so I typically wouldn't use them on my hands, or if I was using them at all, I'd have to wash my hands immediately. So this is like a fresh change. Um, I can see myself using this consistently too. You said you could use it on the lips. I'm, I'm going to have to try that out and let you know if it works out for me, because I'm also particular about that. But so far, like, I do like this product. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we're going to like. Yeah, thumbs, like. Up. Thumbs, Two up. thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Two Three thumbs up. Thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Two moisturized <laughs> thumbs. Like Two moisturized <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> All right. So if there are any tips that you could give the audience that's watching today in skincare, like something that you found that personally worked for you yeah. that you think would work for somebody else. It's hard to say. I think it's all like personal, like it depends on your skin, your situation, what you need for yourself. I think it's definitely a long process. It's a trial and error process. Um, the products that I've tried that I gave maybe a week or so to before I ditched them, I was absolutely sure that they weren't gonna work for me long term. And the products that I stuck with, I knew within the first week that they were. I'd say if something's sort of working for you, um, and but you're not seeing immediate like perfect results that you want, like don't give up on it just yet. And like you, you definitely suggested sometimes things take time before before they really um, come to fruition for you. Yeah. Um, and I'm always open to trying new things. Even with my set regimen, I think there's like, we're never gonna close the doors on any product. There's always gonna be something that, that could be even better mm -hmm. and that could just come all together and be your number one product. Like, I'd have never thought I would cover my hands and my lips with one product. <laughs> um, but if that turns out to be what happens for me with this one, then yeah. I'm totally like, I'm really glad that I gave it a try and didn't like shut the doors on any possible things that could have come well, for me. I hope this product becomes the norm for you. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> well, thank nice. you for you know, sharing with us today. We definitely appreciate that time and the effort that you put into letting everyone know what's good. And if you like the information that we have, like and subscribe our channel, comment. I don't know if there is anything that the live team has that they want to say. Live team, do we have anything on the back end? No. All right. I hope that you enjoy the products. Did you like the smell? I yes. Like you smelled it. Yes, and it smells really good. Like it, it smells it? lemony, like fresh. Right. It smells like uh, lemons to me. All right. Well, Citrus. Stay tuned. Look out for the next episode. Big up mm -hmm. for coming in, Alia. And... We look forward to hearing and seeing you in movies uh, and bringing your norm product with you. So that <laughs> yeah. I'll bring it in the background. I'll just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll advertise it for yeah. you. Yeah. All right. Shout out. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.